gonna take you back to the past To play the shitty games and suck ass He'd rather have a buffalo Take a diarrhea dump in his ear He'd rather eat the rotten asshole Of a roadkill skunk and down it with beer He's the angriest gamer you've ever heard Angry Nintendo nerd He's the angry Atari Sega nerd He's the angry video game nerd Yeah, when you were a kid in the 80s and especially the 90s, it was all about running out to the mailbox to find that new issue of that video game magazine. Because there was tons of them. They were filled with awesome stuff. Previews for upcoming games, new consoles, walkthroughs, codes, and reviews. In the past, I talked about Nintendo Power, so it's about time I talk about the others. Some were about the brands and the consoles like Atari Age, but others were more generic like GamePro and Electronic Gaming Monthly. And even into the millennium, we had retro throwback magazines like Video Game Collector. <laughs> look at that guy. What a nerd. In today's age, you can look up anything about games you want on the internet. Walkthroughs, cheats, reviews, previews, whatever. Back in the day, if you wanted to know if a game sucked or how to find a secret or get an infinite lives code, you had to wait for one of these to come out monthly. Well, let's start with the oldest magazine I have, Atari Age. They came free with a subscription to the Atari Club. They were pretty short reads too, only about 15 pages each, and they were all printed in Center City, Philadelphia. They didn't give much insight on if the game sucked. They were mainly filled with fluff pieces about new games to buy and some articles. But then again, this was Atari's official magazine, so what do you expect? I mean, Nintendo Power did the same thing. Remember it said Back to the Future had that distinct LJN style? The first issue of Atari Age has an awful interview with none other than Pac-Man, filled with awful Pac puns. Pac-Man says, I had what you'd call a well-rounded education. Oh, boy. I was involved in high school dramatics. I played the lead in Central High's production of Man a la Muncher. Huh? I did more acting in college, mostly theater in the round productions. Oh, come on! Oh, I love this issue right here. E.T. on the cover. Might as well just had a sign that says the end is near. Atari Age also had some cool do-it-yourself type articles teaching you how to fix joysticks and even how to make your own left-handed joystick. Overall, a fun magazine to pass the time or read on the shitter. Later, with the rise of Nintendo and Sega, more magazines began popping up. They expanded their coverage and became more in-depth. So here we have Game Players Magazine, Video Games and Computer Entertainment, well that's a good one, Game Pro, and Electronic Gaming Monthly. Game Players started out as Game Players Strategy Guide to Nintendo Games. It's basically a knockoff of Nintendo Power, but it's unofficial and has nowhere near the quality. Just look at these screenshots. I understand capturing game footage back then wasn't as easy as it is now, but look at this shit. Looks like they took the picture with a Polaroid, then photocopied it 50 times. And the covers are usually just the box art from whatever game they're covering. Sometimes they're all over the place. Look at this. They basically took whatever video game stereotypes they could and slapped them on the front. W what game does this represent? Okay, this guy, he looks like Rad Spencer from Bionic Commando, mixed with Matthew McConaughey. Why is there a kid doing a hand plan on his shoulder? The skater kid looks just as confused as I do. Okay, this might be the worst cover I've ever seen. Super Mario 3. Apparently, I can't even tell what I'm looking at. What is that thing? What is that thing? It looks like a mangled Easter egg or something. Holy shit, I mean, they, they, they didn't even try. You have what looks like Wario in the corner and someone must have sneezed all over the print. The only thing that could possibly indicate that this is a Mario cover are the words. Imagine if you couldn't read. You wouldn't have any idea what this was supposed to be. You, you wouldn't even know what it is. I mean, you'd just be sitting there trying to figure out what this puked out pastel piss picture is. One thing that really twists my asshole is the sheer number of ads. The same 1-900 number shows up three times in the same issue. Look at this face. Yeah, laugh it up while you can, kid. Your dad's gonna flip shit when he sees a $500 fucking phone bill. I swear, every other page is an ad. Look, ad. Ad? 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 Ad! 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 
Look at this. A picture of burnt toast that's so big it takes up more than a page. I don't get it. I don't get it. The sad thing is I've reviewed most of the games advertised. There's ads for Hydlide, Super Hydlide, Street Fighter 2010, Silver Surfer, Tiger Electronic Simon's Quest, Tiger Electronic Ninja Gaiden, Kid Cool, The Power Glove, and even Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle. The most frequent ads I've seen to come across are shitty joysticks. There's tons of them. Shitty joysticks, shitty joysticks, shitty joysticks everywhere. I don't get it. Was there something wrong with the controllers that came with the system? Oh, looky here, the U-Force. Are joysticks a thing of the past? I hope not, seeing as most of these ads are for joysticks. Are they trying to put themselves out of business? Not to mention, they all suck ass through a crazy straw. I like to call these shitty friend controllers because they were the controllers your shitty friend would make you use. Another thing I love are the ads for the most stupid, useless shit. Like, look at this, gaming gloves. They're basically fingerless gloves, except with a thumb. Could you imagine being that guy, showing up to your friend's house with these stupid neon Batman gloves? Was holding a Nintendo controller really so bad that, oh, he needed protective equipment? Ugh. Oh, but it gets worse. Here you go, the Thumb Master. It's basically a bright purple uh, cushioned condom for your thumb. But it eliminates video thumb. Have you ever in your life suffered from video thumb? Well, maybe Silver Surfer or one of those games where you need a turbo controller. And when you do, your thumb will thank you. Thank you. Now, these guys know how to make an ad right here. It's a dude getting his nuts kicked in. Why? Why did they do this? This is a real ad. It's kicking him in the balls. This one says, we took some of the worst garbage on TV and turned it into a <laughs> and turn it into a great video game. Yeah, I bet. Here's an ad for a Game Boy Light. What really weirds me out is the kid in the back of the car, no seatbelt or anything. What's even crazier is in later magazines, they replace this ad with real life people. They put this kid's life in danger just to sell a shitty Game Boy Light. Oh, look at that. An ad for the line of Game Boy shit from STD. Yeah, I like how the word handy is in quotes. Yeah, they just knew they were jerking off. Speaking of STDs and being handy, there were tons of really adult ads out there too. Just look at some of these. Kick some balls, monster bone, pray for a full frontal assault, size does matter, and of course, the Sega dick. PSM even did a swimsuit special. What were they thinking? The articles range from interesting and useful to downright idiotic. One of the best features was the walkthroughs. Like right here, they hand drew all the levels from Super Mario Land on Game Boy. That's pretty cool. And here's a walkthrough of Robocop 2 on NES. Man, I wish I had found this when I reviewed it last year. That game made me want to get my dick shot off by Robocop. Here's a letter from a kid who has a sister named Dalsum. He actually sent in her birth certificate to prove it. Hopefully it was a copy. Here, they talk about the Home Alone games and even promote the upcoming movie sequel and the Home Alone phenomenon. Yeah, such a phenomenon. You know that, that guy right there? He turned out to be a pizza boy. The reviews are always a major part of these magazines. They gave kids the insight on which games were worth their money and which ones they should avoid, like the fucking plague. But sometimes these recommendations are really off the mark. Like right here, Contra 3, a game revered as a classic, one of the best side-scrolling shooters on the Super Nintendo, and they gave it sevens. Then look at this shit, Terminator 2 on the NES, a game that's total shit, and it's got an eight, a nine, a seven, and another eight. Are you kidding me? Terminator 2 on NES has better scores than Contra 3? Yeah, I mean, that, that's like saying I, I, I tasted a shit-flavored ice cream, and I gave it uh, a 10 out of 10. It was good, trust me. That's not the only shit thought highly of. Here's Double Dragon 3. Its fun factor has a perfect score. No way. No way. They included the Bimmy and Jimmy screenshot. Well, at least the caption has the correct name. Believe it or not, there existed a magazine for the Amiga CD32. The crazy thing is that the magazine kept coming out long after they stopped making the system. And look at this, they gave Gloom a 92 out of 100? Thankfully, my CD32 is safely burning in hell where it belongs. Man, the memories. It's fun to read these knowing how the technology evolved. 
They covered the breakthrough of laser discs, virtual reality, and all the new types of controllers. Here's the shitty Sega Activator. Damn, this guy could give Keith Apicary a run for his money. A lot of these magazines came with technology, some being bundled with diskettes and demo CDs. For the April issues, GamePro would have a parody section, Lame Pro. This was fun to read. I love Bubonic the Blowfrog and his pal Snails. Yeah, it was stupid, but back then, it was just cool to see people in the gaming industry making fun of games. Here's a piece about the ultimate gamer. This guy's no joke. He makes my Nintendo suit look like a cheap Halloween costume. Here's the top four hot video game babes, and for the ladies, the top four hot video game hunks. The artwork was always great. Well, not always, but sometimes. Oh, and in this picture, this kid's holding a ninja star and whipping out a yo-yo right as he's about to be brutally murdered by a skeleton. Oh, and then check out this picture of Godzilla and kinda King Kong. And they're both really shiny for some reason. This picture, I don't know what is going on. It's just hideous. When it came to drawing Link, for some reason they always had a problem. Here he is on the cover of Nintendo Strategies. At least I think it's him. Oh, and this Link looks more like a villain than a hero. He's pretty scary. Zelda's just over there chilling with Aghanim. She doesn't even look like she wants to be saved. Yeah, she's probably horrified by Link's demon spawn face. This one's not so bad, but Link looks really pissed. And this one here, it's like Tim Allen playing Link. Uh? Here's some fan art. Some of it is really amazing, but some of it, as you can see, it's shit, and I know that's not nice because it's probably some young kid who drew it, but the kid's grown up now so he can handle it's shit. Just flipping through these magazines is like opening up a time capsule. You just can't go wrong. So, let's end with a top five. It's the nerds top five most 90s moments in gaming magazines. Number five. Crime wave, look at this scene. I mean, look at this. Okay, you have this guy screaming, and then you have this guy with these cool shades, and then this girl who looks like she's falling asleep or something. Is this Dan from Street Fighter Alpha? There's this guy with a backwards hat wearing pajamas carrying a fucking gun, and then on the ground, there's all this money and guns and bullets and cocaine. Yeah, in the text, they're talking about drugs. It's cocaine in a gaming magazine. Number four, this gang right here. You got this badass biker granny, this bow tie wearing nerd, this cool gamer kid, this punk ass mohawk motherfucker, and then this Valley Girl sitcom star, and then a bulldog with the same sunglasses as the kid, and it's all for a Pictionary game. Yeah, Pictionary. Number three, an ad for Socks the Cat Rocks the Hill. You got Bill Clinton jamming on the sax and Socks the Cat coming out with this real badass looking grin. What the hell? And this is for a real game? Now that's 90s as fuck. Number two, wow, wow, look at this kid. He's saying, ass. I mean, look at this. He's just cruising through the galaxy, surfing through space with those badass sunglasses and knee pads and that Tiger Electronic game of NARC. Yeah, motherfucking 90s. And at last, number one. All these glorious goddamn mullets. Business in the front, party in the back. The iconic haircut of the decade. You wanna look like a bad motherfucker that plays real hard, guzzles Jolt Cola and watches nothing but MTV? You gotta roll 1090, my dude. That's 10% up front, 90 round back. Look at this Joe Cool some bitch. That's a guy who knows all the tips and tricks. Yeah, motherfucker.